Sorry, I was sitting in a meeting all by myself. Oh, is that what happened? Yep. Yep. I just opened a whole new meeting instead of the meeting that had been scheduled, and I was sitting there by myself, waiting, wondering where. <laughs> so glad you someone would join. Wondering where everybody was. Yeah. I think by 1.30, I would have figured, hmm, I've done something. <laughs> I was starting to get worried. I was getting a little worried, but I was. I'm trying to get on, trying to get on. Anyhow. I thought maybe you were in a, like a CAO meeting or something. We did have one this morning, but uh, no, I was, I thought I had clicked on the, the meeting I had scheduled, but instead I clicked on creating a new meeting and I was, I, you know, nobody else had the coordinates to that. So nobody was going to be joining. <laughs> You're having a council meeting all on your own. Yep. If you hear a little noise in the background, I've taken the phone and put it under some pillows on the ne next room. I've advertised a lawnmower for sale and the phone's won't stop ringing. <laughs> <laughs> all and, right. I think we're all Merville's here. Down to visit I've got, I've got Tim, I got Jeff, I got Brent, I got Merv. We're, are we all ready to go, guys? We're yes. ready to go. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to call the, the committee meeting to order. Are there any oh. additions? Are there any additions to the agenda? Um, anybody? No additions. Excellent. Excellent. Can I get a, a mover for the confirmation of the agenda, please? Moved by Brent. All those in favor? I'm really sorry, guys. My nose is running like a tap. I have to get up and take some more Claritin. Um, is there any pecuniary interest or the general nature thereof? Seeing none. All right, can I get an approval of the minutes of the committee meeting held on May 5th? Move by. Merv, all those, any errors or omissions on the uh, minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor? All right, we have no delegations, so we're gonna kick this right off to Kevin. Go ahead, Kev. Okay, um, I'll start at the, uh, the arena. Yep. The only uh, the only big change is the uh, is the blood donor clinic is canceled, and uh, I'm not sure why. But I know why. They, they, as they got looking into it, the chairlift uh, weight capacity is not there. So, anyways, that's what happened there. You know, that is one thing we should be making sure that Dane is looking into a grant for that, for access uh, an accessibility grant. I know that she's looked previous years, but I'm just thinking, you know, that that's been a constant problem, uh, especially when Stone Fence is, is in there. Um, I guess uh, onto the village, uh, Timber Gardens are doing the uh, planter boxes. Uh, we'll put the brackets up here shortly. Uh, I don't think the uh, horticulture is going to put the uh, their flowers out until probably end of June or mid June kind of deal. Uh, we've been talking back and forth, just keeping in touch to see what they're, uh, when they're going to start. But anyways, uh, that's with that. Um, Centennial Park, we're doing maintenance. Um, the new play structure uh, for Centennial Park and Opionga Park, I was just talking to them this morning. Uh, they're supposed to be doing it Friday. So uh, in, that's what they said, installation. So. Hopefully, cross our fingers, nothing changes on their end. Uh, they'll get them in, and we'll have to uh, put sand in after they're done their installation. It's kind of ironic since we can't even use them. Yeah, I know. And and they, the reason why it's a little bit uh, sooner than later is because they're, they're not installing them. Or like in the city, everything is kind of just starting to open up. And they contacted us and say, hey, can you? I said, yeah, if we want to do it now. Let's do it. And then it's done. So the time yeah. is right. So anyways, um, we're painting the gazebo uh, in Centennial Park. Um, Opiongo Park, uh, I have a quote of uh, $1,200 to repair the uh, that shade structure. So uh, what do you want me to move forward on that? I would think for $1,200, yes. It has to be fixed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Louis Feliber, local 
gentleman. I went and talked to him and he asked me if he was interested and he said, yeah, so uh, he's doing it. I like uh, employing local, that's awesome. Uh, the farmer's market, Legion Field, the farmer's market, uh, as it stands right now, they're going to pre-order online kind of deal and hopefully to uh, set up a stand unless something changes. Um, they're going to set a time limit for maybe an hour or two and have everybody pick up at that given time. Um, the ball field. Uh, I had to put plywood up on the entrance of the ball field because uh, people were taking their dogs in on the ball field. So the sign, the signs there. However, uh, the chain I had across wasn't uh, wasn't good enough. So I put a sheet of plywood on it. <laughs> it's it, like you know we had to do it. Uh, they weren't fine. Wasn't working. Um, the uh, Cormac Park. I was talking to Jason, they're doing spring cleaning up on Foymount, so I'm just going to coordinate uh, when the machinery is up there that we can uh, make it happen. Uh, horticulture uh, on the Welcome to Eagleville Hill, um, they're wondering about uh, some kind of a sign of, of an, just directing a pathway or a walkway up the hill. Uh, what's your feeling on that? I didn't know there's a walkway up the hill. Yeah, there is. There is. Uh, there is. Yeah. I mean, just on the shoulder of the road. The, yeah, it'd have to be in. Well, yeah, it's somewhere it'd have to be inside the sidewalk, Merv. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. As long as it doesn't interfere, um, like in the winter time with sidewalk maintenance, I don't see any reason not to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's quite the climb too. It's really good for the for the quads. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, whatever muscles. I'm not a muscle <laughs> person. Uh, anyways, that's th that was a question they had, and uh, we'd have to put two on because we'd have to put one on the on the sidewalk, and also one up on Victoria Street, direct them to come down the uh, the walkway. Is that uh, is that our is that our cost or their their cost? I, well, I'm just not familiar with it. Yeah, that would be a discussion. I think. I think. I'm not sure what the what a sign would cost. Uh, stating that, uh, we'd have to see what see what they would like to do. Have we have yeah. we ever have we had a sign there before or no? No, never a sign there before. Basically, Kevin, it had be a wooden sign with an arrow pointing walkway or something. Is that what you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because you don't really want a, a, a sign that sort of sticks out. You want something sort of blends in, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So if you just have yeah, like I like post. that. Like more of a, a farmy looking yeah. sign. And, and just sort of a post, like something a post like with a, an arrow yeah. and a block pointing that way. It shouldn't be that expensive. To do. I, I don't think so. We could, they, well, I can go to them and then we maybe get some suggestions or some ideas and uh, and go from there. They probably have something in mind anyways, I'm sure. If they, if they brought it up, they probably have something in mind. So. That's possible, yeah. Yeah, maybe a little more information, Kev. Yeah, and if it's not too serious, I'll just move forward on it. And uh, like, you know, it's... If, if we if we designate as a walkway with a sign, if someone falls on it, are then we responsible? We We'd be responsible anyway, Merv. Okay. And... Okay, um, some stuff to the question. Uh, we had talked about uh, selling some surplus equipment uh, out of the lending hub. So uh, I did some uh, pricing on the what we bought it for at the given time. And uh, anyways, um, what's what's everybody's feeling on proceeding with this? Uh, what, what does it look like? 50% of purchase value? It's, yeah, it's, it's hard to say. This is, it's all in half this. decent. Yes, it this is. This in half decent shape? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I guess uh, maybe we could put a uh, sell them. We're going to be selling uh, recreation, we'll be selling surplus, uh, surplus equipment and just move forward on that. Next in the next couple of weeks, kind of deal. 
Yeah. So, so it's not it's not of grave concern to get rid of it very quickly now because we don't need that secan for the proposed tables and chairs that you were going to buy. Correct. So I think you know we can do this thoughtfully um, over the summertime. Okay. As opposed to you know a, a fire sale. Like, like, don't give it away. Get something what you figure it's worth. You know what I mean? If it's oh, that's yeah. exactly what I'm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. Well, we'll we'll just back up a little bit on this and uh, and just see what's going to be the best. I haven't had any uh, inquiries as of yet for the uh, rental of it. So, and that's the other thing. Uh, if someone does come, then like you know. Right now, the build uh, like the recreation department that side of it is is closed. So uh, anyway, I was gonna say that's the other thing. I mean, I can't even imagine how you would disinfect, say, a kayak as it comes. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Yeah, and you know, guys. I mean, I was watching the premiere at one o'clock here with uh, Minister Elliott and Minister Mulroney, and I I don't. They are not even predicting. Um, a phase two and they're ready to roll back phase one if they see a spike. So I think that we, you know, I think we're taking the right precautions, um, but I, I don't I don't see this ending very quickly. Okay. Okay. Um, now it's not it's not a uh, just just a question. I think I asked this before. Like I'm not sure when when the um, the parks get open and and get going, and and like that involves or or will involve our public washrooms. Um, I know in other places, like you know, other spots there, like uh, say at Walmart, where I'm not like I don't think they're having like they're having them cleaned every couple hours kind of deal. But uh, how does that work for us, or how will that work for us? So I guess just wait and see or ask, oh, Ned has her hand up. Uh, so just the, the health unit for um, other people that have opened their washrooms. I know Madawaska Valley opened them for, uh, I guess, for, for their services. They have a porta potty there. Uh, the health unit has given them the guidelines of twice a day. It has to be cleaned twice a day. Okay. Even seem like enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, that would, that also would make me nervous, but Kev, I think that there's also a wait and see. Yeah, yeah, not a problem. Not there yet. And I would assume we probably won't be there for the next month. Yeah. That, I, you know. Yeah, I, I'm okay with that because once we turn the water on the tour, tour transformation booth, we also, it's all tied together to the water filling station. So the, yeah. if you kind of keep one closed, the other one will stay closed too. So. Is all of council okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's all for my uh, rec report. Does anybody have any questions or additions? Anything for Kevin? Yes, Jack, go ahead. Yeah, the only question I have, Kevin. So, you okay with the tourist information booth? being closed and that's what we're going to do or you yeah guess? well right right now the uh, until the government like you know says those uh, facilities can be open we pretty much got to stay status quo yeah so and i mean uh, the province is canceling or the other sorry other municipalities are canceling things as far into the year as the end of august so i think that we're on the right side of this the other challenge I think that we'd have in that particular uh, tourist information booth, it's so tiny, uh, I would be concerned about physical distancing. Well, we, we'd have to put signage on the door and we'd have to put plexiglass glass across the front and say only one person at a time. Like, you know, we'd have to do our, like, you know, to protect exactly. our employee. Well, and now um, the Canada, uh, Teresa Tam is now saying, no matter what, we should be wearing non-medical masks wherever we go. That that was just a, the announcement at 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock this morning. So I think, um, yeah, you would only have, you only be allowed one person in there at a time. 
I, uh, I had to go to Conway's pharmacy yesterday and we know how large that facility is and they're only allowing two people in at a time. Mm -hmm. so there was uh, quite the lineup outside of uh, Conway's, uh, Jack saw me. Um, <laughs> there, were, uh, there were, I think maybe five of us standing in line because only two at a time, which I think is extremely prudent on behalf of Conway's. <laughs> So I guess we'll just have to wait and see what's, what's coming forward to us and go from there. But Kevin, I'm really glad that we're going ahead with the flowers on the bridge. I think, you know, everybody's kind of sad right now and something like that just sort of buoys your spirits, especially if you're stuck on the bridge. <laughs> it's, it's kind of, it's pretty and yeah. Okay. Glad we're going ahead with that. Um, so I'm moving on to, uh, to Dana's uh, report. Um, I guess the one, uh, the newsletter uh, proceeding ahead through, I think she has another one coming out in June, I do believe. Mm -hmm. So any uh, extra input on that? Uh, no, but I think that we can submit stuff to her. Yeah, okay. I mean, for now, it's it's all COVID all the time, right? Right. But the uh, I think it it's a moving target. But I think that uh, just ensuring that people know the uh, rules of engagement and things that we're doing in Bonnechere Valley, I think it's very important. And that chart um, with our roles and responsibilities, the county, the province, and the feds, that is an excellent tool. I think it's. It, for, from my standpoint, it will cut down on the amount of inquiries I get. Um, I've, I've put myself out there to help out with people that want to navigate um, the CRA stuff, like the different grant opportunities. Um, but at the same time, I'm getting queries about things that aren't in our, our scope of work. So. Okay. so thanks to Dana and Annette for getting that done. I guess here yeah, I was just, I talked today into this morning and the uh, we're definitely the hotbed for marriage license. It's uh, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> uh, since Dana's uh, sent her report in to me since last week, uh, she's had twelve more. Wow! Um, uh, like that's unheard. That's unbelievable. <laughs> crazy. I want. I wonder where these people are getting married, though. Like, I wonder if they're just having ceremonies of like the bride and groom and two witnesses. Or it's it's interesting. Yeah, that's the cheapest. <laughs> that's the cheapest. Yeah. Yeah. There was a Zoom wedding, apparently. No. Apparently. That is so neat. What a great idea. Technology's come a long way in the last couple of years, eh? For sure. Um, Did everybody see my Facebook post about the uh, the uh, Hallmark movie, where a uh, uh, I don't know a successful banker and a and a country bakery owner uh, meet by accident in a Zoom meeting. This is the way of the world. And guys, I don't know if anybody's read the Eganville Leader this morning, but holy Hannah, are we ever lucky? And um, it seems North Algona Wilberforce is having quite a time um, meeting like this. So yay for us, are we ever lucky? They should uh, just use our public uh, hotspots if they need help. I'm not sure what the challenge is. I didn't get through the, the whole article because I was watching CP24, but it, I think that we're in a really, really good, uh, good place to be able to meet like this. I, and I guess Dana was saying also the planning meeting uh, as of right now, it's going to be, and it's probably going to be June 16th. Am I correct in that, Annette? That's correct. We're, we're hoping to get the four applications in the queue all done on the 16th. Uh, they generally don't take long unless there's uh, contention. So. We'll provide details to the Zoom meeting for the applicants and the adjacent property owners. We'll provide a call-in number for the public to go out in the newspaper uh, and as well Perfect. to email their comments ahead of time. So we're going to do as much as we possibly can. Uh, if the orders are lifted and we can, can go public online, but 
uh, at this point, uh, it's, it's probably going to be done like this. That's awesome. That is awesome. Again, technology has come a long way. Uh, the application for the bridge, uh, Jen, you got that in the paper, so every, like that's kind of old news. So but it's old, but it's good. It's, great. it's good, yeah, it's good <laughs> for sure. Did you uh, like my quote that we're not giving back seven hundred dollars of a million dollars? <laughs> yeah. I guess we have to let a contract on that, one, don't we? Yeah, but. Um, you know, our investment of 83,000, uh, again, thanks to um, to the province and to Minister Yakabuski, who's always in our corner. We didn't quite get the 3 million that Renfrew got, but uh, their scope of work is much larger than ours. Uh, I guess the, a lot of the is, is uh, you're, you're aware of the reports that Dana submitted for the, uh, uh, funding uh the one interesting funding from the uh for us is uh canada summer jobs we submitted uh for seven positions and uh we only received one and that was for a swim instructor so um right now that program isn't gonna happen <laughs> so uh so can we can we use that position elsewhere not the funds no that's well, what I'm being I, told. I think at this point we should be taking the swim program out of our budget anyway. Like there's no way we're having a swim program this year, right? No, that's that's right. That's right. That's right. So I think we cut the revenue and we cut the expense. That's a shame though. I think that's across the board from the CAO meeting this morning. Uh, most of the other municipalities were the same. They applied for whether it's five or seven or however many students and they normally get two or three. Uh, they're finding that they're only getting one. So it's 100% funding for the student, but their fund, they seem to be, at least in Renfrew County, funding less students. Uh, and, and majority of them were for swim programs, which probably won't happen. So uh, it's possible maybe a, a letter to uh, to Cheryl Gallant's office to ask uh, if it can be used for another position because we're not the only ones. Uh, I probably talked to about five different municipalities in Renfrew County, they're in the same position as us. And I mean, we're just not gonna be using the money. So maybe if we sent a letter to, to Cheryl, maybe she could help us out to amend the-, the, Let, the Let's make that happen. Okay. Go ahead, use my stamp. Let's make that happen. I'm sure Cheryl will go to bat for us as she always does. Yeah. Um, by the way, on the Main Street revitalization, or the, I'm sorry, the CIP, did everybody see the new signs at Fresh Mart and don't they look snazzy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The great use of that fun. They look great. On, sorry, on that note, um, the Laurentian Valley also is pushing to have the CIP money be able to be used for COVID-19 stuff. So whether it's uh, plexiglass or stuff like that, or um, even have the province fund stuff like that through our CIP that is available, as well as like I think retail stores that are selling clothes that have a curtain change room have to put up doors because it has to be able to be wiped down, things like that. So we're keeping an eye on that. Sorry, Kevin. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> Colin DeMello was just asking the premier about that, about will there be a fund for people that um, that need to put up plexiglass that have no cash flow. Um, apparently, plexi is very hard to come by right now. No surprise. Um, I guess on the last page, uh, Dana has some... Uh, some other uh, inquiry mappings from certificates being used for different uh, lots of concessions. So that's all moving forward, I guess, <laughs> through time. But uh, anyways, that's pretty much uh, Dana's report. So uh, I, I really don't have anything else to report on at this given time. <laughs> fairly, fairly quiet. Uh, it's report. pretty amazing how many applications we have in for different uh, different funding programs. This is fantastic. I mean, we pay for it through our income tax, so let's get it back. Mm -hmm. That's right. Your Valley. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Did anybody have anything for Kevin or Dana's reports? 
I, I, I have one more, just, I just thought of it here is uh, I'm going to call uh bouncy castle uh, just to, just to let them know it's only, that's only business to say, Hey, uh, this year, I'm sure yeah. they have other spots, uh, other town and townships uh, and cities that have can I, I know they've canceled. So um, just to be keeping for next year. Yeah. I think uh, if I'm not mistaken in that you did report to us that all municipalities have canceled their Canada Day activities in Renfrew, in Renfrew County. County. Yep, correct. But, okay. okay. Well, and, and I mean, the city of Toronto canceled, Ottawa is canceled. So I think, um, you know, everybody, it's a month and a half away. And I think people are, are being really careful about planning anything. Um, I know that the fire department is going to order some fireworks, but that may have to be a Labor Day activity, which doesn't make me feel good. I'm I'm the one that said that you know Canada Day is Canada Day, and uh, it's a shame that we can't celebrate our our nation's birthday. But um, you know, I think uh, we can put on a little bit of a party when when all this is over. And maybe I think Brent, you were mentioning uh, something potentially in McRae Park when the pandemic is over. Yeah, they're going to do a grand opening eventually just because they started up just kind of getting the landscaping there done and everything. Um, right. So they're working with Kevin actually just uh, getting everything all finished up there this year. And then they're still good for uh, funding their the signs from McCray's as well. Uh, so the McCray family is sponsoring the signs. Uh, so they'll be closing that up this year. So Kevin's working with them pretty closely, which is good. Good. Maybe we could have a Labor Day barbecue. I'm really hoping for September opening. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Anyways, I think that's that's all I have uh, this given time. Um, and uh, I'll send some pictures, hopefully on Friday, uh, if the uh, contractor gets in and gets those play structures up, uh, send some pictures back. And like you said, Jen, it's too bad the, the, they can't be used, but we'll just have to tape them off for the time being. and. Uh, the way it is <laughs> yeah well they're not going to go stale and when the when playgrounds are allowed to be open i know that uh, especially the people that were um were uh, lobbying for the one at opiongo park i know that that's very much appreciated i've talked to a few people about it so i think you know it is what it is for now hopefully the kids will be able to use it or maybe adults might be able to use it and you know the foreseeable future it's just a shame right now for sure for sure anyways that's all i have to report on thanks kevin You're welcome i've waved more in the last like eight weeks than ever before in my life like this is now the <laughs> everybody's waving at each other all right so, uh, Annette, was Steve going to join us? Yes, but I don't see him. So I'm just going to send him a quick text. And then if you want to, go on to my report. I, that's what I was going to say. Okay. We can move on to you if you want. Okay. Okay. Okay, so. Can I get it up here? Okay, so uh, not a lot going on other than, uh, of course, uh, COVID-19. We are, we are back here in the office. Uh, everybody's uh, working at their spaces with uh, keeping physical distancing, you know, not having uh, everybody in the lunchroom at once, stuff like that. We are preparing, Kevin and Jason were in earlier with some plexiglass to put up at the front counter, uh, looking at how we're going to, to do reopening when, when that time comes. A lot of fire is already open. A lot of the other municipalities are talking June 8th, so we'll see. Um, so we're looking at preparing signage to have one person at the counter, person in the hall, 
uh, one person at the top of the stairs outside and one person at the bottom and the fifth person waiting in their vehicle. So we're only going to have two people in the building at the time and then coming in the one door and going back the other door outside the other door. So, the, so it's not people walking together in the hallways. Um, Kevin also already reported on Dana and, and the marriage licensing. So uh, she's not doing more than one or two a day, but we are still getting, getting calls and uh, you know, she's trying to do as best she can. But, uh, it's, it seems to be working out. She's got her, her mask, the reusable masks, gloves, uh, sanitary um, uh, lotion for the hands. And then also um, if they need a pen, they can take the pen with them and go. We'll give them, we get free pens from different places so we can give those away. Uh, the paper, it all comes in electronically. So it's on our paper and we take it with them. So trying to be as, as careful as possible. Um, looking to on reopening, you know, some things will have to be done by appointment only because we can only have a couple people in at, 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 uh, at one time. Um, I think the council continuing with the, the interviews for the service delivery of you, that seems to be going well. I know Sandra put together, yeah. uh, I don't know how many documents, uh, <laughs> For, for them to put them in, in the Dropbox there and sent them off. So uh, it was quite a few, long, long list. Um, and um, as previously reported, we talked about Sandra and myself receiving the uh, AOMC designation. Um, Congratulations, ladies. Thank you. Uh, Fantastic. The Integrity Commissioner report that was reviewed at the last, uh, at the last meeting. Um, and no complaints filed for 2019, so that's good news. And uh, the budget, I think, went really well. With the committee on the 15th, that's on YouTube now for anybody who wants to watch. And the, the, uh, the final uh, PowerPoint presentation is prepared in draft now, so we'll be ready for the second meeting and the, the tax rate bylaw. And you can see uh, the rest of my report is pretty much uh, the statistical data from uh, the chief building official. And, uh, you know, there is still, like I said, those four planning meetings that will be happening uh, on, on the 16th, uh, probably electronically. Um, but but moving things ahead because there's a 20 day appeal period. So that's going to, you know, none of that's going to come into effect until July. And so if people need uh, permits or need need to open one of them, they want to open a business and they need a zoning amendment. So, you know, we don't want to be putting people off until uh, August or September. Yeah. So uh, trying to do what we can to move ahead where, where they're able to reopen. If they're not able or, or the construction can't happen, then uh, you know, that's, that's beyond our control. So I don't know if there's any questions on anything like that or the financials that are in there. Um, that's all I have to, to report and uh, everything's, everything's going well. Yeah, so. You did answer the question I was going to ask about the marriage licenses. Dana is, in fact, wearing a cloth mask. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have anything for Annette? Yeah, I think uh, all things being equal, I think budget went very well. I'm sure it's riveting entertainment for those that want to go on and watch. Um, I do want to thank, again, all of the department heads. <laughs> Uh, and of course, council, you guys all came well prepared uh, with your questions. I think uh, deliberations were good. Um, I see that we are under 2%, which is important, uh, but are still able to uh, contribute our $83,000 to the bridge so that we don't have to give back three quarters of a million dollars to the province. Um, but I, I wanna thank everybody. I think uh, it's a difficult year. Um, the, you know, especially with the revenue losses uh, due to COVID. Um, but I think all in all, guys, I think we did the best that we can do for our residents. Um, I think, well, that's just it. It's just been, you know, COVID has taken over. So it's so weird to think that we're almost halfway through the year and this is where we're sitting, you know, two and a half, what, two and a half months later? It's crazy. So, um, yeah, that's that's all that I had to report. Um, I guess uh, I don't know. Um, we'll be having our EOC meeting tomorrow. Steve hasn't uh, responded, so I don't know uh, if something has come up unexpectedly. Uh, I think you have his report. Um, I don't know if there was any questions you want me to take back to him, and I can get them uh, through email. 
Um, I, I, I would, I'd love to talk about the shipping containers, but I think I'd like to wait on that until we have Steve. Yes, okay. I know that these sea cans are being used, I mean, they're being used all over the place, even for like um, pop-up shops, but mm -hmm. I don't disagree that there needs to be a section on maintenance and aesthetics, but perhaps something to speak to Steve about. Yes, and my, my understanding from Mark is that they require a building permit, like they are a storage uh, yeah. spot. So you can't just bring one in without us uh, being aware of it because you would have had to apply for a permit. So, um, you know. That's right, it's over the square footage. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So maybe we can uh, put that back on the agenda for when we have Sure, and, and I know we, uh, we were dealing with everything COVID-19 related and we put off our, our training for our code of conduct and uh, some of our HR policies that we haven't brought forward, but uh, I will uh, work with Steve on, because I think we're, we're pretty much there. We just have to bring them to committee and to council to get them passed. And, uh, and we may have to do code of conduct training uh, this way, virtually. Um, yeah. Like I said, we, we postponed it, but we didn't know how long this was going to go on for. So. Right. We'll have to to sort of see about that. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So, and everyone's got Mark's uh, building report. Um, all right. Let's move on to correspondence. Does anybody have anything in correspondence? I like that it's you know AMO watch file, AMO COVID, AMO COVID. <laughs> You can do one of those like almost every day, I think. I think we just got one this morning. Yeah. Yes, it made up for the, for the meetings. We didn't have very little correspondence. That's right. Yeah. No, there wasn't much coming in there for a time. And what was seemed to be all the same. Like, you know, it, it, we would get like eight different letters on uh, conservation authorities. But council had already seen it the one time. So I didn't think we needed to look at it eight more times. Uh, and then uh, all the other questions, I think people were just uh, not dealing with things. And now, yes, a lot of it is is COVID related, but uh, it's, you know, it's relevant and it just speaks to different things. So uh, we're, we're going to see that continue to pick up, I think. Yeah. I like the one from the municipality that wants the, the uh, feds to pay all the property taxes and the presidents pay none. I don't know what the story is there, bad weed? That uh, was uh, from Midland. Yeah. yeah. I said, oh, that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think FCM and AMO are really pushing uh, for some funding for municipalities. They're both, uh, they're both continuing to try to get that, uh, that through. Yeah. And as you've seen, we, we're short revenues. We're having expenses. Uh, what will be covered, what won't, I don't know, but uh, we'll see. We'll, I know they're supporting the other local businesses and they're supporting other uh, individuals. So we'll see what, uh, you know, what they come up with um, or whether we're, we're on our own and, and the budget cuts and the revenue that we've given up are just are, are the best that we can do to help. I don't know. Well, FCM is pushing very hard. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll be interested to see what comes out of that. Is there anything further on correspondence? All right. Uh, County of Renfrew update. Um, I gather everybody have seen the, the numbers. We're at 25 confirmed cases here in Renfrew County. Uh, outside of that, we the warden has advised that um, all the departments are doing very well in, in the face of this and uh, considering doing uh, our committee meetings uh, by Zoom in June. Uh, we haven't made a decision yet. The warden just put it out there to, I think, to to generate some some conversation. Um, of course, what happened was we didn't have committee meetings in April, so then our our county council meeting was six and a half hours long because you know some of the questions hadn't been answered. So I'm not sure if if uh, if that will uh, help that or not. Um, outside of that, you know, it, it's, it's amazing, much like our own staff here in Bonashir Valley, the, the county is, is rolling along, they're getting stuff done, it's, it's not as usual, but it's, 
certainly um, they're, they're doing their best much like we are. And that's all I got for the County of Renfrew. I'll have more at our next meeting. Our County Council meeting is next Wednesday morning. Okay, uh, draft resolution re-amendment to criminal code prohibiting certain styles of firearms and accessories. Uh, Tim, thank you for your, um, your amendments. Uh, I, I'm assuming everybody saw uh, the original and then um, just a couple of tweaks um, from Councillor Session, which I appreciate. Um, did anybody have any questions about this resolution or comments? Um, I'm just going to put it out there that it appears that every day they're adding other firearms to the ban list, um, but not necessarily being wholly transparent about which ones are coming up. Um, so I think we're definitely on the right side of this, and I, I believe that we will see traction out of this. Um, again, we, we've talked about this ad nauseum that, you know, this is not where we should be putting that, those monies. Uh, our border patrol, our, our policing, um, they're the ones that we should be funding uh, to help with this, with this crisis. Tim, go ahead. <laughs> well, this, the, way, the way they're doing it now is through the effort. Oh no, oh, all garbly. Hmm. Can you well, try again? No good. Now, can you log out and log back in, please? I'll give it a go, yeah. Thank you. Technology is great when it works. Yeah. <clears throat> Jen, I had an issue with my computer the other day and I had to uh, power it right down and then it- Oh, really? So I don't know, because it might- I don't know if t if Tim has his updates all up to date, but sometimes that's what happened to mine the other day. I had to power it right down. And come back. Okay. So um, just just so. Let's see what ha I'm just guys yeah. gonna grab some Claritin. I'll be right back. Jack? Yeah. Mine mine wouldn't open the two the two or three PDF files, uh, and uh, I'm taking it into Jen on Friday. I can't fix it. Okay. So what I've done is. Sent the package to my home computer and I can open all the files on that one, but I can't on the township computer. Right. No, I know mine wasn't working. I had to boot it right, shut it right down and then restart it and then it worked. So am I okay now? You can hear Tim. Yes. You're better Perfect. now. There we go. Excellent. Go ahead, Tim. So this morning now, uh and this is how it's it's getting stranger all the time. It, it's not it's not part of the OIC. OIC um, in, in the original ban, like you said, you hit the nail on the head. They're adding more firearms every day. This morning they're doing they did a uh, a four ten four ten like like a four ten is what you give your youths to to bird hunt. Yeah, and. Oh, uh, sure, sure. 22 plinkers, 22 rim fires were, were on the list. Mossberg, some Mossberg 22s, but they're using uh, the FRT for the firearm reference table and they're really not announcing it. Uh, what's happening is the dealers that are buying stuff, they get the, uh, they basically, it, it's a, a tool for them to use to see what has cleared the RCMP and they just keep adding more and more things every day to the prohibited list that are commonly used for plinking and hunting and you know the whole tactic at the start with going after the assault style firearm has really turned into going after whatever they see fit to take from the from the people so it's well uh, and I, I think my frustration yeah. is that they they rolled out that initial list um there were errors on the list but now adding to the list um, especially during the pandemic, like it just, the timing of it the, and the optics of it are so wrong. I think this resolution is excellent. I am, I'm excited about getting it out to our municipal partners across the country. Um, I think that uh, through FCM and AMO and um, 
and you know our our own channels i think that we're going to see an outcry and i'm not again if i thought that this that this list was was correct um i think i'd feel differently but it's just not so well, well, well what what so much public misconception is is that they're they're eliminating the threat of of spraying the most people at the most time you hear this all the time well, every firearm that's legally owned in Canada has to go through RCMP qualifications, basically. It's got to fit a certain criteria in order for it to be legal in the possession of a civilian. And, and these so-called assault-style firearms are no different than the semi-automatic, semi not fully automatic, firearms that are used for hunting. And a lot of them are used for hunting, just look a little different when they dress them up a little bit, but in absolutely no way, shape or form is the functionality of these firearms on the list any different than any other hunting rifle. So, that, and that's the whole beef with it. That it it's really, really politicizing something that, that really shouldn't be, you know, um, if they did research, like I say before on, on say an F-150, and it was used so many times in a drunk driving accident. Well, you're not going to ban F-150 trucks, right? I mean, it's just totally crazy. You go after the person or, or the people that have done this. Um, but but with the gun legislation, it's it's always the case of, of targeting the firearm. They always have to go up to the firearm. Firearms that are legally in possession in today's Canadian citizens are, have all been gone through RCMP style checks already right so they all have to admit, meet a certain criteria you know magazines at a certain capacity you know five for uh, um center fire rifles uh, uh, in the capacity uh in, in the uh, pistols like you're in, that you take to the range they're 10 um but that's it that's it they, they they've all fit the criteria before and to start picking them out of the public's hands right now it's absolutely crazy well thanks I think that I think as many have said, they've missed the point. When you've got a neighbor that's gun crazy, you got to build a higher fence or a stronger fence. This isn't going to solve any problems. No, no, we're coming in from the U.S. Well, in other countries, that's why. In other countries, yeah. We need to arm our border patrol and our police with more stringent regulations and um, and higher levels of of um, penalties. So anyway, well, we will, uh, we will read that off uh, later this afternoon. If anybody, did anybody have any other amendments to it? I didn't think so because it went out and there was, everybody seemed quiet. So that was good. All right. Um, okay, so our, our next meeting date is uh, June 5th. Second. June 2nd, okay. And I guess we'll still be in Zoom meetings. Yep. Uh, so we'll be, doing, we'll be doing budget. Yes, right. Um, so obviously the media isn't with us. Apparently people are watching it and then they call me later on. So that's good. Um, we have no closed sessions. So I'll ask for uh, conclusion of the meeting, please. Can I get a mover? Be at 5.30. Okay. No, 3 o'clock. EGC. Oh, okay. Sorry. Glad you mentioned it. Okay, so move by Merv. All those in favor? Okay, yeah. We'll see each other at... Uh, 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. Take care. I'm just waiting for uh, YouTube to catch up.
It takes longer than you think. And if I cut us off, then it'll miss the adjournment. <laughs> there we go. All right. See you later. See you later. See you later.